Hey, Jitsbo here. I've decided to start doing development logs, like actual video development logs for Fist of the Forgotten. So this is going to be for June, the beginning of June and May 2020. I've had a lot of stuff going on the past few weeks, so let's check it out. Now, fortunately, I have source control here to make it easier to keep track of everything that I've done. So we'll just start looking through May through June here. I've significantly improved the realism of the game by adding more moths flying around windows that are lit. Ah, look. They know how to love. I made some tweaks to the footstep and jump particles to make sure they're a little more visible and also so that they work on GLS2 if I have to support that for mobile. You'll notice they're much brighter in dark areas. And there's also a darker element to make them visible when the background is very bright. Camera shake and vertex distortion have been tweaked to help better sell hard landings. And of course, punch impacts. There's now an animation for skidding to a stop if the character is moving quickly. When sliding to a stop with fists, sparks are kicked up. I actually had to modify the engine a little bit so that the sparks were oriented not just based on their own velocity, but their velocity relative to the camera, so they looked correct. I've set up some visual feedback for activating each part of the portal on this level. This is part of the Forgotten Civilization with some interesting technology. I rewrote the way I'm handling the procedural animation on the Spiderbot boss. It still has a ways to go, but it's starting to look pretty interesting. I'm experimenting with a subtle outline and highlighting the bandana and bow to make the character pop a little bit in dark areas. This is what it looked like before for reference. And with the outline and highlights on. I'm still undecided on this, but I think it may be an improvement. I fixed the Steam Achievement icon resolution, which for some reason I thought was 80 by 80, when in fact it was 64 by 64. Fortunately, I drew the icons in Inkscape, so I could export them at a different resolution without losing quality. Added a quick reset or suicide button in case you get stuck or just want to start over quickly at the last checkpoint. Screenshots are now saved to a subdirectory so they're not cluttering up the config files and save files. I added more environment art to the background of the first boss battle. The boss now has a short shutdown animation after punching one of the power generators to make it more obvious to the player that they're doing the correct thing. There's now a separate in-game menu, so you can still adjust your settings, but if you want to start a new game or load a different save game, you have to quit to the main menu first. This makes things a little less confusing. I want to teach the player new mechanics without having explicit tutorials for them. So I created an object that can only be destroyed with a charge attack. Charge attacking downward into a slope can allow the character to redirect her velocity forward and make much further jumps. I tried a new technique in Blender and made a pretty cool looking cave here. Pretty happy with how that turned out. Also made some platforms and I'm starting to fill out some of these levels that were just blank boxes before. I revamped the mesh on these enemies to look a little more menacing and less blocky. I thought with the silhouette style and the scale of things I could get away with some blocky stuff, but uh, that didn't work out so well. Worked on some more industrial meshes for platforms and whatnot. Checkpoints have been tweaked, so you're a little less likely to jump over them accidentally. I've been working on drawing one of the photographs that shows up in the opening sequence. Since I still struggle a lot with 2D drawings, especially faces, I've also been working on my quest to draw a thousand faces in various shapes and sizes and styles. These are studies of other artists and photographs, not my own works. I'm just practicing so that I can draw my own stuff better. I made a gigantic satellite dish for some background environment. This is a little difficult to show, but if you hit a slope at an angle, sometimes it would kill your momentum. So before you'd have to run up this slope in order to jump up it. But that was a little bit counterintuitive with the momentum based mechanics we had. So if you came in at high velocity, at an angle, you'd actually end up killing your velocity. For example, if you hit a 45 degree angle slope, 
coming down at 45 degree angles, you have a perfect 90 degree angle here and that absolutely kills all of your velocity. So what I did was change it to act as though you first hit a flat surface, which redirected your velocity like that, and then hit the slope, which redirected your velocity again like that. The flight paths for the enemies in this level were tweaked quite a bit to make them feel more fair. Fallback fonts were added to support languages like Thai, Japanese, and Chinese. Made some tweaks to my Vine Generator tool to make life a little bit easier on myself. I made the character collision shrink over time so it looks more natural when she gets squished instead of having the object either pass through her or stop at where she was standing up. I started composing some music for the industrial section of the game. As a quality of life fix for myself, I can now load levels at specific checkpoints. Maybe a bit late to mention this, but I brought the camera in a little bit closer so that the character is a little more visible. Modeled an overgrown sky bridge and implemented a swaying object that you can uh, wall jump back and forth between. It'll probably be suspended from a crane or something. You may have seen the menu sounds that I had before that sort of play music on their own, but now I've got a little ambient track kind of going on in the background. I added a separate audio bus for the world. That'll allow us to add reverb effects or possibly control the volume and reduce it if you want to turn the sounds down but leave the music on. I started working on a little splash screen and loading screen so that you know when it's in the process of building shaders when the game first launches. I made a shader to kind of fake the reflection of some trees with a little normal map distortion to make the photographs look a little bit more realistic. And finally, I've started working on the higher poly version of the character that we'll be using for some of the cinematics or cutscene type things. It's been a little while since I've done uh, subdivision surface modeling. Still a lot to do, but making progress. Hope you enjoyed this video, and if you want to support the project, you can become a patron like these awesome people here. On top of shoutouts in my videos, patrons also get access to alpha versions of the game so they can check it out while it's in development. And if you don't have any money, I completely understand. I am an indie dev after all. You can just add the game to your wish list or tell your friends about it. Those help a lot. Also, if you're wondering why I don't put videos out very often, in addition to the amount of time it takes to edit them, I'm also really bad at recording myself saying just a few seconds of anything like this. I've had a lot of stuff going on in the past few weeks, so take uh the significantly I've significantly, I've significantly, I've significantly, ah, oh, Hey, this is Jitspo. Jitspo, why do I say it like that? I'm experimenting with a subtle outline and highlighting the banana. Banana. A devlog for Fist of the Forgotten. You know what else is forgotten? Whatever I was going to say next. The boss now has a short stutter animation after punching one of the things. The boss now has a short shutdown animation after punching one of the power generators. The boss now has a short shutdown animation after triggering. The boss now has a short shutdown. It's a, the the boss the boss the and also give him a little breather. I've decided to do a Fist of the Forgotten development log. Deve development development log. Yeah, I can speak. I want to teach the character. I want to teach the character. I want to teach the player new concepts. Hey, this is Jitspo. This? This guy? The mustache and the beard? The flight paths of the enemies in this level were tweaked quite a bit to make it a lot easier for...
tweaked quite a bit to make them more flair of players. It's kind of late in the project to start doing these, but uh, better late than never. Oh.